to module six, where we're going to learn more about stoichiometry. This is a new word for you, but you've actually already been doing stoichiometry because here is the definition. All right, module six, stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is relating the quantities of different substances in a chemical equation. For example, converting from moles of one substance to moles of another substance that are within the same chemical equation. So remember how we've done several of those examples? That is stoichiometry. The definition again, relating the quantities of different substances in a chemical equation. Now we will take it a step further. Um, in this module, we will be converting from grams of one substance to grams of another substance. So that part will be new. Let's do another one for practice. Example 6.1. This is on page 164. Example 61 says, a chemist forms ammonium sulfate, an excellent fertilizer, by combining ammonia and sulfuric acid. If the chemist ends up making 12.2 moles of aluminum ammonium sulfate, how many moles of ammonia were used? All right, so let's pause and think about what we're looking for. So this is example 6.1, and I think I'm going to start organizing them by when we read a problem, we need to think about what we're trying to find and the information that we know. So over on this side, I'm gonna write no, okay? So in this example, we are finding how many moles of ammonia, which is NH3. How many moles of NH3 is needed? That's what we are looking for. And what do we know? Well, the first thing we need to do with any stoichiometry problem is to find the balanced equation. So let's do that first. We were told that you need ammonia, which the example problem told us is NH3 and sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, and it produces NH4, all within parentheses in a two. So this is a new way to write an equation. When we have a little two outside of the parentheses, it means that this molecule inside NH4 is doubled, okay? There's two of that molecule. So we have NH4, two, SO4. That's the chemical formula for the fertilizer that we're talking about, ammonium sulfate. So what do we, so we're looking for how many moles of ammonia. What we know is how many moles of the product that we're gonna end up with. So over on the no side, we're gonna write 12.2 moles of NH42SO4. We know that we end up with that much fertilizer. We also know the ratio between moles of the fertilizer and moles of the reactant, NH3. So let's, no we don't yet, we have to balance the equation. We don't yet know the ratio because we haven't balanced the equation yet. So after we balance this equation, there's gonna be a two out front here. I'm not gonna go through balancing this one because you guys have had quite a bit of practice with balancing equations. So I figured it out on my own. There's a two here, and so the ratio would be two moles of NH3, okay? For every two moles of NH3, we can produce how many moles of the fertilizer? There's no coefficient out front here, so that means one mole can be produced. One mole of NH42, SO4. Okay, so there are the two things that we know, how much we start with and the ratio between the reactant and the product. Now we can figure out 
the answer by using our factor label method. 12.2 moles of NH4 to SO4 times, we want moles of that NH4 to SO4. Talk about a long chemical formula. We want that on the bottom, and then we want the moles of what we're moving toward or looking for on the top, which is moles of NH3. Okay, and now we have to plug in that ratio. And we know from the chemical equation that for every two moles of NH3, there can be one mole of NH4 to SO4 produced. So that's how we set it up, and then we just multiply across. So it'd be 12.2 times two, the answer would be 24.4 moles of NH3. And circle our answer to make it easy for your favorite chemistry teacher to find your answer when you're working on a test or something. So that is the answer for example 6.1. So you see, this is an example of stoichiometry, which you have already been doing. I did want to show you this example to point out how in chemical formulas sometimes you can have parentheses with an additional subscript. It just means that everything inside the parentheses is doubled if it's a two or tripled if it's a three. All right, so you have to take that into account when you're balancing the chemical equation. The next thing we need to talk about when it comes to stoichiometry is limiting reactants. A limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first when there is more than one reactant in a chemical reaction. Okay, so if you have two reactants, one may be left over at the end of the chemical reaction. You may not burn through all of the oxygen that's present, for example, in a combustion reaction. So I have a little example of that. Okay, I have two candles. Here's one candle with quite a bit more wick and wax than my second candle. Now remember, in complete combustion, you do need to have two reactants present, don't you? What are those two reactants? That is right. You have a product that contains carbon and hydrogen. That's one. And then you have oxygen gas, O2. That's the second one. Okay? So for these two candles, if you can see them, we would have different limiting reactants because in this candle here, where I have a very short wick, I'm going to run out of the compound that contains the carbon and the hydrogen, my wick. I'm going to run out of my wick even though there's plenty of oxygen left over. So when my wick runs out first, the reaction is over. My limiting reactant would be the wick. In this example right here, I was going to show you what happens when the oxygen runs out first. I think that you already know. Okay, as you can see, I have plenty of wick here, so my candle would burn for quite a while, unless, of course, I limited the oxygen that was present. Hmm, what can I cover this up with? How about my handy dandy chemistry book? So, if I limit the amount of oxygen that's present, I really hope I don't burn a hole. Oh good, it's already burned out. And there, the flame is out, the reaction is over, and what ran out first was the oxygen. So there are two examples of limiting reactants. I'll set my candle right here so we can see when it runs out. Next up, we're gonna talk about fully analyzing chemical equations. That is a section in the module. What all can we learn from a chemical equation? We're going to use this chemical equation as an example. 2HCl plus Ba parentheses OH2. So there's another example of where this molecule, OH, which is called hydroxide, there are two of them, 
within this bigger molecule with the barium. This is barium hydroxide. Okay, so everything inside of the molecule here, everything inside of the parentheses is double. There are two oxygens, there are two H's. Get it? Great. Uh, finish the reaction, Carly. Okay. Uh, it yields BaCl2 and 2H2O. All right, so if we look at this chemical equation, we see that the two reactants and two products can relate to each other. The number of moles of one substance could be used to calculate the necessary amount of the moles of any other substance in the chemical equation, which we have kind of practiced before. Oh, look, my wick is just about gone, which means that my limiting reactant has run out, and so this complete combustion reaction is over. Set it over here. Okay, we're gonna write down what I just read to you. 